In this video, I'm gonna walk you through all of the essential basics that you need to start live streaming. Now, what we're gonna be talking about is not necessarily um, your tablet, that's something completely different. This is what I would recommend as a better solution, and it's more of a solution that will allow you to grow compared to an iPad or a phone. When you, when you live stream from one of those devices, first off, you're limited in your Zoom, you're limited in how many cameras you can use, and you're limited with integration. Yes, you can post your stream um, if you go on YouTube, Facebook, or whatever on your website, but what are the chances of ways to add, say, scripture on the screen at the same time? Or having multiple people, you're limited by one device. So this is gonna be walking through all the pieces of a standalone live streaming solution and all the parts that are needed for that that can easily grow. So this is actually the system at my church. All right, so the very first thing that you're gonna need is a computer. Now, I've mentioned this before in other videos, and you can check out the other videos on my channel on the parts and the specs that I would recommend. And these are also the same specs that I use on my personal streaming, my portable streaming, as well as at my church or at other churches that I consult with. So here is our computer that I recently rebuilt. So inside of this, this is actually a Ryzen 5 1600. We have 16 gigs of memory. We have a graphics card. This is a an old, actually, um, GeForce GTX 750 Ti. And, I mean, that's mainly it. I mean, we have a solid state drive for the operating system and another drive for recording if we wanted to record directly to the system instead of live streaming, which is optional. Now, this does have a DVD drive, DVD burner in it, but that's really not even needed. And again, I had a link to on a previous video that I'll link up here on actually upgrading this as well as another link to just the specs of all the details of this. Now, could you use a Mac for this? Yes, you could. But again, we're talking about in just the specs of a computer, you're looking at maybe 350 up to maybe um, $750 for a good live streaming system that as long as this is the only thing that it's doing, it can last you for quite a while. Um, there are other options for that, but again, you just I recommend a computer. Can you do it with a Mac? Yes, you can. It's gonna cost you a little bit more. That's the only reason why I'm steering towards a PC for this. So now the next thing that you need is a form of capture card. Me personally, I like the Decklink mini recorders. This is the regular one. What I have on my home computers are 4K ones, which this one only allows you to go up to a max resolution of 1080i um, at 60, 60 frames a second, 59.94. Um, and that's only because what we're using here, that's the max resolution that our video switcher does. But really, you're doing the capture card takes whatever video source coming in. And now this is not a webcam, this is actual camera like a camcorder or something like that will come in either through SDI or HDMI most of the time it's more commonly HDMI but like I said this is for growth so they will come in this will convert whatever the video signal is into this and then it translate that to encodes it so that the computer can process that and serve it up to whatever platform you decide to use whether it be daily motion twitch Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo, you can name whatever service and it will work. It doesn't really matter. It, it will just capture this in. Now, there are other options. This is an internal card that has a PCIe connection. You gotta make sure that your computer can support this. Um, and I talk about that in another video that I'll link up here as well. If you're not comfortable with something that goes on the inside of your computer, what you could also do is get a USB powered one like the Elgato um, HD60S, I believe, and other ones like that, external ones. Now, again, you gotta make sure when you get this, get a USB 3.0 version, so that way it hand, it's fast enough to take in the video and your computer is fast enough to process and turn all that video into ones and zeros and encodes it so that it can serve up. 
Now the next thing that you need in this basic setup, you need some type of camera, some type of video device. This is one of our old Sony Handycam CX230s. This is what we currently use as a left camera here in the church. But this one has an HDMI output and in this cable, this plugs directly into the capture card that's inside of our computer. Now you just have to make sure that whatever camera that you plug in is able to output the resolution that the capture card supports. Now again, in our setup, because this is the camera at my church, this camera pushes out at 1080i and that's the max that this capture card can accept. So I already know that it works. So just make sure um, you, you gotta be careful on the type of capture card you got. Now personally, that's why I would recommend the 4K version because the 4K can handle that and it's kind of, I don't wanna use the word future proofing, but if you ever decide to step up higher than 1080i up to 4K at um, 30 frames a second, it can handle that whole range. So it just gives you a little bit of growth. But again, honestly from if you're live streaming, 720 isn't bad i'd rather you stay at 1080 but that's your choice now i didn't mention it but it's kind of obvious that you need internet on your computer to do this now could you use wi-fi of course you can now but i would recommend that you get a hard line ethernet connection so that you don't have any doubt that you're not going to have any fluctuation or interference again if you don't have an option Wi-Fi is fine as long as it's able to produce the speeds, the upload speeds that you need so to sustain a quality signal from the whole camera, capture card, and computer whole situation. Again, I have mine hooked up here to our network switch that's connected hardwired here, and that's what we have going. Now, to get all this stuff together, I'm not talking about installation and stuff. You need a program that's going to capture in what's happening from the capture card and then serve it out to whatever platform you decide to choose. There are multiple options that you can use. There's XSplit, there's OPS, there's Livestream Studio, there's vMix, um, there's StreamYard. I mean, there's a ton of them. You just have to find whichever one is comfortable for you. Me personally, and here at my church and the clients I work with, I recommend OBS because it's free. And once you set it up, you really don't have to touch it. We've been live streaming for about two years and really have not had to change anything with this whole setup. All right, so now we're inside of OBS and what's happening is the video is coming out of the camera through the HDMI into the capture card and then it's, the computer is processing that and it's being served up in OBS. And as you can see, this is what's going on. Now, that's really all it takes to do this. Now, this program, just like the other ones, you connect it to whatever platform you want to use. Like I said, Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo, whatever one. Some of them are free. Some of them are paid. That's your choice, whichever one you want to go with. We personally use Facebook Live and sometimes um, YouTube. Uh, but again, you pick whatever platform and this software does not cost anything and you can go to whatever. Now vMix also works very well. There is a one-time fee for that. I think it's about $60 and it goes up depending on your features. Um, and again, is once you set it up, that's really all you have to do. And this is the whole setup that we've been live streaming with um, for a while. And this is what will replace the entire um, iPad or phone if you're live streaming with this. Now, why do I suggest this? Again, we're only connected to one camera right now, but with this type of setup, you could do something like this. All right, so now in this scenario, we still have the exact same setup like we did before, but now instead of us being plugged into one camera, we are connected to a video switcher which is currently we're using an ATEM television studio. And this allows us to have multiple connections coming into our streaming system. So again, we're just, we accident that our capture card captures video. That doesn't mean it has to be one camera. It could be multiple. So in this type of setup compared to like a tablet or something like that, you could have one camera like we just showed and it will give you the same look, but you will have the ability to zoom and move and pan and things like that. But in this type of setup, you can have a production which would allow you to accept multiple cameras. So this is the same camera pointing 
at the left podium like we currently have. But now I can have computers, anything go in and be served here and it's handled externally. Or if you get a different capture card that allows multiple connections, Blackmagic makes one of those as well too. You could have multiple devices connected as well and you would have a multi-camera type setup. So here I can come in here and change to our static camera. And now we have that shot. We also have our, well, I'm using the right camera right now, but we have our front PTZ camera that's at the front of the church or our back camera that's in the center back of the church. And now you can have a whole production. But again, we didn't change anything here. We went from one camera input into you can have as many inputs as you want going into the system and it's handled externally. Let's repeat all of the basic items that you need to live stream. First, you need some type of video device, whether it be a camera or a collection of cameras with a video mixer or something. You just looking for some type of video source. Now that's going to go in to a capture card that's on the back of your computer through USB, Thunderbolt, or um, an internal card similar to what I showed, um, like the Blackmagic Deck Link or some device like that goes into a computer whether it be a pc or a mac again i pref i recommend a pc just from cost but it can work with either one and then you have software that handles the capture card understands the signal that's coming in from the capture card and then is able to serve that to your platform of choice that's really all it takes and i have a link here before um, I'll have a link in the description of how you can purchase all this stuff for around a thousand dollars with a one camera setup and all the pieces that you need to build a computer so that you can start live streaming. Now, if that's a lot and that seems kind of over your head, you could always contact me here at the bottom and I can either build you one or I can actually just help you with all the steps that you need to put that thing together. I have plenty of videos here where I've built that, but if you need some hand holding to help you get through it, I am more than happy to help. Just email me and we can get you up and rolling. So again, this is AJ. If you like this type of content, I appreciate a like, consider subscribing and hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry. See you on the next video. Later.